In my last recording, I spoke to you about the arrest and detention of Francois van der Merwe, Willem Petzer, Devin Hofmeyer, and Tevi Vessels after a protest march that got a little physical, or a little out of hand, put it that way. Well, as most of you should be aware by now, they were all granted bail of 5,000 Rand each on Monday, which was yesterday. Make no mistake, I am super glad that they were granted bail yesterday. But let's look at the facts for a moment. First of all, there was barely any activity that could be considered to be an assault on the police, which is what Francois was arrested for in the first place, I think. All that happened was that in the tussle between the protesters and the police, one of the policemen was accidentally bumped with an elbow by Francois, after which he was physically assaulted on scene, as well as afterwards when he was out of sight. He was assaulted to such an extent by the police in the cells that he needed to visit a hospital for a checkup that night. But let's look at their stay in the cells. Keeping in mind that, apart from Francois, Willem, Devon and Thierry did not take part in anything that could remotely be considered to be violent. Charges were incitement to violence, if I am not mistaken, but definitely nothing physically violent. For this, the three of them spent an entire week in the cells, including a weekend, and ended up getting bail of 5,000 Rand each, as I said. I watched the last hearing live, and to tell you it was painful is an understatement. The petty bullshit that went on during the bail application process, this is all the trials now, was in my opinion nothing but a show of force by the police as well as the judiciary. Yes, they did get bail at the end of the day, but honestly, did it really have to take an entire week? I'm sure that this little episode has had the exact desired effect it was meant to have on the white population as a whole. Those that were even aware of what was happening anyway. You would be amazed at how many people are totally oblivious to anything that has happened in Groblesdal over the last month. It's quite incredible. As they say, ignorance is bliss, right? As I said in my last recording, in my opinion this whole case was used to send a clear message to the whites and that message was that we should know our place and if we dare to step over that line, we know what is going to be in store for us. Whether they succeed in driving that message home in any of these four young men, I guess only time will tell. But as I also said in my last recording, this was only the beginning of what is going to be possibly the final onslaught on the Whites. I sincerely hope you are ready for what is still to come. What I am about to say may upset a few people, but if you take some time to think about what I am saying, I am sure you will agree with me. As much as I hate the thought of our young leaders and potential leaders being arrested and locked up like this for no legitimate or serious reason, and when you consider the fact that murderers literally get bail within a day or two and at a far lesser fee, you will know what I am talking about. Again, as unfortunate as it is, it is going to take a lot more events like this to wake up enough of us. In my opinion, not until almost each and every one of us have been touched personally by these kind of events, the general attitude of the whites will not change. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, the more the authorities get away with it, the more frequently these kind of things will happen. The level of brutality is also going to escalate over time. As horrific as it is to think about, how long do you think it will be before one of ours gets killed by the authorities? It is only through traumatic experiences like these that we are going to be woken up. Just how many incidents and just how brutal it is going to be, who knows? All I am saying is that be ready and expect it, because as long as there is no real resistance to these events, they will happen more and more frequently, and as I said, the intensity of the brutality will increase too. Be ready for it. It's coming. So what is the solution to all of this? Again, I don't have all of the answers, but I do have a personal opinion which I will share with you now. The way I see it, there are only two solutions to fix a situation like this. One is to fight and the other is to get away from the threat. In our case, my opinion is that the first opinion is out of the question for a number of reasons. Firstly, we don't have enough trained men willing to do what would be necessary. Our younger generations have, for the most part, exchanged their balls for playstations and ponytails. Although there are still quite a number of older guys, such as myself, who are still fit and healthy enough, I guess, we are simply too few and far between. However, the biggest reason why fighting is not recommended is that firstly, it is unnecessary and secondly, there will be a huge amount of bloodshed, something I am sure 99% of us are not ready for. So the second option 
is, in my opinion, the only viable option left to us. Because we have nowhere to track to anymore, we are now at the tip of the continent with our backs to the sea. The only viable alternative is for us to claim a portion of the land, congregate there, and then defend it with everything we have, because that will literally be our last stand. I'm talking about secession. The ULA and the UCS have a complete plan set aside for us already. They have gone through all of the relevant international as well as local legal processes. They've also done a complete feasibility study on secession. All they need is for us to say, yes, let's do it. How do we do that? We simply take five minutes out of our day to log on to their website, either one of their websites, and give our mandate. In other words, you need to say yes to secession. It has to be shown that secession is the will of the people. At some point in the not too distant future, this will probably become a life or death situation. But do we really want to wait until the blood is flowing in the streets before we decide to do something? I think not. I have already given my mandate. Have you? To be honest, I have little to no faith that any political party could fix South Africa, for many reasons, but the main one being the fact that anyone trying to force the Rainbow Nation idea is simply wasting their and our time. In fact, they are playing with our lives. Also, the country as a whole is totally bankrupt and in so much debt that we would never be able to repay it. If we secede, we leave all of that debt behind for those that created it to sort out. In my next recording, I'm going to talk about the viability and or the possibility of a so-called folk start in the areas that were originally earmarked as such pre-1994. So keep an eye out for that one. In the meantime, please give me a like, share this, and of course, if you haven't already, subscribe. You have absolutely nothing to lose. Until next time, be safe out there.